So in the recent video, we broke down the elements that make up hip hop and I promised I'd get into some of these subgenres as well. I think it's very important to know that there are many lanes in hip hop. I originally came up with this thought to explore this because the question hit me one day. Why does no one talk about the subgenres? If you look at any other main genre of music, there's always subgenres. And most of the fans know of these genres, but it seems like hip hop fans aren't aware of the own music they listen to, which really left me feeling unsettled. With country music, there's bluegrass, Americana, Tejano, and many more. In rock, there's punk, psychedelic, grunge, indie, and many more. With electronic music, there's house, techno, dubstep, hardstyle, and of course, many more. Point is, I can keep going, but if you ask the average hip hop fan what their favorite subgenre is and what they like to get into, many of them can't explain that. They'll either say hip hop, rap, which we covered isn't even a subgenre, RB, trap, and that's about it. This is a problem. So, for this video, I'm going to give you five subgenres, notable songs in them, and notable artists to look out for. You may have heard of some of these before, but you may not have heard of some of these at all. But either way, you will actually have subgenres to match with and pursue new music to explore. Founded by Teddy Riley and Bernard Bell, this is a style that is considered a fusion of hip-hop and dance pop of the mid-80s and early 90s. It was a staple sound back then with very upbeat tempos accompanied by fast dancing and used a lot of R&B melodic vocals over hip-hop-esque instrumentals. The first instance of this style was by Janet Jackson on the album Control that dropped in 1986. The swing technique is from the style of the rhythm from the hip hop 808 sounds as well. Swinging is a technique used to divide the beat of the rhythm further than the actual tempo of the whole song. This allows for a more lively and seemingly organic beat. I can explain this to you all day, but instead, I'll give over some examples and artists to listen to for the actual feel. Notable songs include, but are definitely not limited to, Don't Be Cruel by Bobby Brown, Poison by Belle Biv DeVoe, Feels Good by Tony Tony Tony, and even as recent as Finesse Remix by Bruno Mars and Cardi B. Yes, that is New Jack Swing. I really think it's a great genre and I really wish we had more songs like this in today's age. It gives me that very nostalgic feeling of the early 90s and I really hope someone out there brings it back. It's said that this style started in the Midwest. The secret sauce to this subgenre is fast paced rapping or rhyming. Instead of calling them rappers, they're actually referred to as choppers. The name is derived from the fast sound you hear of, you guessed it, helicopter propellers. Of course, any artist can rap fast for a verse or for a song, but to be considered an actual chopper versus a rapper or MC, this has to be your identity. Notable choppers are Bone Thugs and Harmony, Twista, Busta Rhymes, Zero, Tech Nine, and many, many others, of course. Choppers usually use twice or even three times as many syllables in a bar or line as other artists use. I feel like most of the artists above are well known, but if not, I'll leave songs to listen to as well. Adrenaline Rush by Twista, Thug Love by Bone Thugs and Harmony and Tupac, or 
I found me by zero just to start you off. Every major genre has that one rebellious subgenre that fights back from the standard of the genre it's in. Hip hop is no different. Experimental hip hop takes the main essential elements of hip hop and dumps them on their heads. To the point where the average person doesn't identify some of these artists as hip hop, but they very well are. Just because you have a family member that's a little bit different from the rest of the family doesn't make them outside of it. If anything, we could take a note from that different outlook and occasionally ask ourselves what's on the other side of the wall, what's on the out of bounds, what's outside of that comfort zone and predictability that we've grown used to in this genre. You see, I have to get philosophical with this because it can be somewhat difficult to even explain what it is or as a whole because most artists in this genre not only differ from the general elements of hip hop, but they differ from one another too. There's literally no limits when it comes to experimental. And it's to be noted that experimental is not the same as alternative. We'll save that subgenre for another video, but just a quick example of an alternative artist, think of Outkast or even Kanye West. Alternative is just the other side of the coin of what may be popular at the time. Example, Outkast sprouting out during the East Coast, West Coast beef, or Kanye West rising up during the height of gangster rap. No, experimental is completely different. If what I just described was the coin, experimental would be the act of the coin being flipped and then kicked off into the distance before you get to see what side it landed on. Notable acts of experimental hip hop include Saul Williams, Death Grips, Blades of Hades, and JPEG Mafia. Out of these artists, I've only listened to a couple myself, Death Grips and Saul Williams. Not from disliking the music though, I just haven't got around to the others. I recommend I've Seen Footage or The Fever by Death Grips because I feel like those are good entry songs into them. And I really love DNA or List of Demands by Saul Williams. I cannot stress this enough. If you've never jumped outside the realm of typical hip-hop, this stuff is very different, so approach with caution. Also known as down-tempo, this is a subgenre that was birthed in the early 90s by artists such as Tricky, Massive Attack, and Portishead. It's very bass-heavy, with slowed-down breakbeat-style drums accompanied by female vocals in most cases. It's been described as a fusion between hip-hop and electronic music to the point where there is no evidence of either of the original genres being present. This subgenre itself can be pretty experimental as well. One of the big breakthroughs for the genre as far as mainstream visibility is concerned was Massive Attack's hit single, Unfinished Sympathy. Despite many of its popular songs being sample-based to something that would remind you of hip-hop, this sound at its time was not deemed hip-hop. I listed the artists earlier, but I'll name them again just to check out some of their singles. Tricky, Massive Attack, and Portishead. A few songs you could listen to are Angel by Massive Attack, Numb by Portishead, or Aftermath by Tricky just to get you started on the path. I don't know why, but a lot of these songs really remind me of The Matrix or Unbreakable. Ah uh, yes, one of my favorite subgenres that emerged roughly in the past decade. It's known for its dreamy and atmospheric sounds that it brings through soft, deep pads and ethereal vocal samples used from artists like Imogene Heap. 
Notable artists of Cloud Rap are Lil B, the bass god, ASAP Rocky, and even Young Lean. There are a few different speeds that Cloud Rap can move at also. Some sounds could remind you of a lo-fi hip-hop type vibe, others could take a dreamier turn than that. The originators of this subgenre are recognized by most to be a group called Cloud Dead, which is an experimental hip-hop trio. See the way this works? You may be in a certain subgenre such as experimental, but from that you could birth another subgenre from being creative enough on just a few singles or just a few albums, whatever. Another example of this is how Young Thug is a protege of Lil Wayne, homing in on Wayne's songs were his slurs, his words, or even his auto-tune singing, and from that we have, yes, mumble rap. But let's, let's go back to cloud rap, let's not get caught up on that too much. Uh, but being a forefather of different genres like this is able to create four different sounds. But now let's move on to what we can look forward to in something like Cloud Rap. If you want to get a good feel of what it sounds like, what the instrumentals are like, I highly recommend listening to I'm God by Lil B. It's a great instrumental. I highly recommend listening to Better Things or Bugshot by ASAP Rocky. Those are great songs. And listen to Apartment A by, of course, none other than the originators, Cloud Dead. I think it's far past time that we take hip-hop more serious as far as knowing what it is and what it represents. We live in a time where this genre influences a lot more than people give it credit for in culture and entertainment and many different evolutions from where it first started. Understand that it grew from just a few blocks in a few neighborhoods all the way to being a million, if not billion dollar art as well as music industry. You owe it to yourselves to know exactly where some of your inspiration came from or some of your fashion, lifestyle, or form of enjoyment or anything for that matter. It's not that hip-hop has died, it's just grown so fast, much faster than some of us were even paying attention to. I'm sure that some of the styles that you once loved haven't been lost throughout time and they're not dead, it's just harder to see them from all of the growth and all of the different directions that it's branched out to over the decades. If you want to really get into this, there's actually at least 40 subgenres at this point of hip hop. I plan on going over more, and so far I only gave you five. I tried to give a few familiar types as well as some that may be a little more abstract, and hopefully I put you on a path to something that is new. I'll cover more subgenres in future videos. Check out one of these subgenres and tell us what you think about it in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and catch more subgenres and more topics in the future. Until then, stay up and stay inspired.